We're on, Dean. We're on. Okay, guys. It's been a long time. But that's just the nature thing. Things have happened in my life, in Corey's life, in the Aquarium Co-op life. And one of the things that has happened in the Aquarium Co-op life is these guys, new freeze-dried tube effects worms. They also do have freeze-dried brine shrimp. But today, we're going to specifically talk about these because some of you have seen in my tanks um, something that we make from this to feed these, especially to fish that eat from the bottom. A lot, a lot of your cichlids, catfish, um, you know, fish like that. So one of the things we have is we have brine shrimp cubes, right? And traditionally, when you open one of these packs, you're going to get something that looks like this. You're going to get a feeding ring or a stationary feeding ring. It's a four-way feeder. And we just made fun of this, so I'm just repeating the fun. <laughs> or you get a feeding, a cone feeder, which is designed to put live tube effects worms in so that they come out down here. That will work with these, but it takes a long time for these to get saturated so they come out through the bottom. These typically want to float up. Um, but you could also get a stationary worm feeder with the suction cup. So for this project, we don't need the suction cup, we don't need the ring, we need the cone, and we're gonna find a way of making the cone go like this, where the worms float up. Fair enough? Now, I will say, and somewhere over here, there might be an inset picture of it, you know? Um, a long time ago, like way back in the 80s, I believe, there was a product like this called the Miracle uh, Cone Feeder or Miracle Worm Feeder. I can't remember what exactly. But um, if we get that image, we'll put it up here so you can see what we're basically duplicating. This isn't a new idea to me. And uh, another caveat is in modern times, this idea was actually shown to me from a friend of mine who takes care of my fish when I'm gone and I've just taken it and copied it. So not all of my ideas are brand new to me. Sometimes you take them and copy them or make them better. So for this, we need uh, stainless steel washers. Now, I believe these are one and a half with a three quarter inch hole. Found them at Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those two stores, but they're stainless steel, so they're not gonna hurt something in your aquarium. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue that washer in to the cone um, as level as we can. Doesn't have, it doesn't have to be perfect. And what we're going to use for glue is hot glue gun. And at first I'm just going to put a couple little spots of glue to get it kind of centered in there. It doesn't, it doesn't like to center very easy. Um, maybe my finger will work better. So I'm just gonna touch it here. A little bit of glue there. A little bit of glue over here. And I'm gonna try to center it up while that glue's still hot. Whoops, too much. Oh, come on, there we go. And that glue will firm up pretty quickly. One of the things I do not like about hot glue is the spider webs, but we'll get rid of all of them in the end. Put a spot of glue over there and a spot of glue over here. Now we're going to let that harden up. So it's going to end up looking like this guy right here. This is one that we, we've already done. We put a spot of glue on each one. And like I said, it does not have to be perfect, but I'm going to let this one harden up while I'm doing this. So after I get that spot of glue, then I'm going to take and make a big bead of glue around the bottom. And the reason for that is I want that washer in there really snug. And for that, just so I can see better, I'm going to put on my spectacles and we're going to go around here. What I'm trying to do now is get some of the glue 
to go into the little holes so it's going to hold this thing tight. Oh, and you can kind of remelt those spots of glues. All you have to do is hold the um, the uh, glue gun head on them for a second, like so. Yeah, it's not the prettiest, but it's going to work. And you're not going to see it, and neither will the fish. That's going to take a while. We'll do it. When I make these, I usually do a few of them at a time. Um, actually, I'm going to... I'm going to start another one first. Any special type of glue or does most hot glues you found work in the aquarium? This is hot glue gun from Joanne's Fabric. I, I don't know if, that if any of the hot glue is toxic or not. Uh, I've never had an issue with that. Um, but it's basically just, you know, a hot glue stick and uh, Self-feeding, ooh, that gets hot. I guess that's why they call it hot glue, huh? Okay, we're gonna go around this one now. You can kind of see I'm, I'm being fairly liber liberal with hot glue. Um, like we said before, it's it's not it doesn't need to be pretty. It just has to be functional. So that one's kind of done. Now, obviously, I'm gonna pull all these little threads out. I don't want the fish eating them. Um, they're not too hard to get out of there. That one's still a little warm. So right now, you could take this. Put your cubes of tube effects in and put it in the bottom of the tank and those tube effects are going to float up and the fish are going to pick it out of the little holes in the cone, cone feeder. But to do that, you're going to have to stick your whole arm into the tank, right? So here's the next step in our process is I've taken, um, this is just uh, it's called a spider wire stealth braid fishing line. Um, relatively clear, it's, it's fish line of, of some sort. I've also used, um, this is like a fly um, fishing line. Um, anything like that will work just fine. Um, what we're gonna do is just tie it through here uh, I'm going to go in one side and out the other, hopefully. Every time I, I do this, I think of that time when we did that project <laughs> with the airline and it came out the very first time. Remember that? Yes. It was the, um, it was the little indoor uh, breeding totes for rice fish. Mm -hmm. The odds of which you could have done that. The odds first of try. doing it on the first try are insanely low. So we're just going to cinch this up. Just tying a basic knot. Yeah, I like to, with braided line, you have to go through a couple times. It, it makes it hold much better, but it's just a knot. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, the fish experts out there, sorry, it's not a true fishing knot. Idea here is just gonna sit there. We're gonna cut off the extra. Come on. And then I like to take my little barbecue starter and just hit the end. Call that good. Now, Eighteen inch tank, maybe. Give yourself a few more inches. A few more inches past that. And 
I just use a little ring of PVC. I'm gonna tie it on there. Could tie it to anything that's weighted, basically. Well, it doesn't even have to be weighted. This is gonna be outside the tank. Yeah. Right? So, um, it, it could be a bead. You could even tie it to the suction cup and suction cup this to the outside, but you don't really need to. Um, this, is, this is just gonna be your method of retrieval, really, if you think about it. I'm gonna get in trouble for these basic knots, aren't I? <laughs> I probably will, I just I already know. I only know basic knots too, or not even knots, that knot. That's the yeah. only one I can do, so. Okay, so we're gonna, we'll do three of them and then cut it off. And I would say that that one is ready to go. So we end up with something like that. It's a cone feeder. I think you can get these at the Aquarium Co-op. That's so right, you know. AquariumCo-op.com. Yeah, and you can actually get these um, tube effects worms from AquariumCo-op.com. And you might be able to find them at one of the store affiliates. That's right, Badfish. We, they've, they've now, so I think Badfish was number two, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you told yep. me earlier. Now you've approached a hundred or you've gone over a hundred. We're over I think of last meeting I was in, we were at like 105 now. 105 stores since two years ago, not even quite two years ago. Yeah, it's, it's a year and, a cha and some change, yeah. I think. Yeah. And a one and a half inch washer with a three quarter inch hole in it. Stainless steel. Okay, let's go down. I'm gonna use three cubes in this case. Put them in the top, open up your tank, and then you gotta turn it over relatively quickly. And then I like to kind of just shake it to get the air out. And I'm also at the same time kind of enticing the fish. And they're gonna start picking at that thing until every drop of that's gone. Notice. This is outside of the tank. My hands are dry. Nice. Didn't have to reach down there, put it in. Um, these are some electric blue arcas. I'm, I'm freaking them out right now, but once we sit back, they're all gonna get attracted to that. And one thing I've noticed is if they're not right away, if you just take it after a couple minutes and give it a shake to get those. Oh, you get a few worms going? Yeah, then they know that that's where they're coming from. Cause these guys have never had this before, right? Never, never fed them like this before. All right, I'll get the steady camera on them. Oh, do you see that one? There you go. That was a huge worm. With these big fish, sometimes they'll take a whole cube and run with it or eat half a cube at a time and so you can get make sure all the fish get some. Right. Yeah, a lot of times when, you, when one gets pulled out, little bits get pulled out and uh, that big guy, he's figured out how to do it already, hasn't he? Yeah, he knows. Now others are starting to go, wait, what goes on here? Corridor is saying, wouldn't mind getting some of that. Keeps your food from getting sucked up in filters or anything like that as well. Keeping it off the ground. And and they're not just, uh, well, tube effects are freeze dried. Right. You don't want them just to fill their belly um, and then just get explode yep. when it goes in. So. You can see the little worms sticking out as they hydrate and then they just yank them out. You notice while you're doing this how well this tank is lit. 48 inch tank and I only have a 30 inch aquarium co-op light on it. And it's only at 30%, right? 
Uh, no, it's a little bit higher right now oh, okay. for the video, but normally it's at 30%. Because I only want to um, <coughs> have the Anubis grow. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to have some of those dark edges in the tank for the fish to um, have a little place where they can go. Um, but I will say the color is awesome. The color of the light. Thanks for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. We picked another one that we thought you might like. You can click on it right here.